All right, good morning. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is adding an interceptor here to our Angular CLI application. So that way any of our HTTP calls are going to be including the token. Um, when that gets done, uh, we're going to be uh, creating our client applications for it. So to get started with our interceptor, what I want to do is I want to make a new service for this. Um, and it's going to be inside of my shared class called interceptors here. And I'm going to make an ng generate, and it's going to be a, actually, this is just going to be a piece of TS that I'm going to call a interceptor.ts. Now, I wonder if I can do a ng generate interceptor in my shared interceptors. And it did, it made one here called interceptors.ts, which we can rename and just bring that right in here. So it made this as an interface, which is not exactly what I want. So what I want to have in here is it's going to be injectable. And then I want to have the export class called interceptor and it implements here something called HTTP interceptor. And we're going to have a constructor in here. And this is going to have in it my private OAuth service called OAuth service. Hello, standard gamer. How are you doing this morning? Okay. This thing says that it needs to have a intercept property. I'm going to call this my HTTP interceptor. And in here now we're going to have a function called intercept. And this is going to have some parameters on it. The first one is a request, which we're going to say is an HTTP request of type any. And also a next, which is the HTTP handler. We want intercept to be returning here unobservable of the HTTP event of type any. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have to get the updated request. So we're going to have an updated request here, which is equal to the request.clone. And I want to change the headers here to include an append of the authorization, which is going to be a bearer token plus this dot OAuth service dot get access token. And then all we're going to do is return my next dot handle of the updated request and we want to pipe that result to and it's called tap and then there's an event and then there's a error Tap needs to be from the RxJS dash operators. I'm making vertex animation from Houdini to UE4. <laughs> that does not sound <laughs> the, the most fun. I mean, it sounds like it's, it's enjoyable, but it sounds hard. <laughs> And all we want here is we're going to have a comment which says log to the HTTP response to the browser's console in case of success. And this is the same one only for 
failure. So if your event is an instance of HTTP response, and then the same thing here, if your event is an instance of HTTP response, like that. And that's our interceptor. Okay, on the module here, I need to say that this has a This needs to have an import of the HTTP client module. And then it also needs to have providers on it. And this one's going to provide the HTTP interceptors. And we want to use the class called HTTP interceptor. And we can say multi equals true. And then finally, in our interceptor index, we need to export everything from my interceptors. It's called HTTP interceptor. Okay, we've got that done. So the next thing that I need to do is create a component to look at all of my different registered client applications. So in here, we're going to do a generate component, and it's going to be in features. And we're going to call this just a second, do I want to call it client applications, applications, services. I'm going to call it a client applications. Now we're going to need another one for just one. And in my routing module, uh, I'm going to want to have now, just a second, is we need to have a new path in here. And this one I want to call applications. And this will be a client applications component. And we want to say that this one can activate my auth guard service, which we added last time. We also need another one for application which can pass in this ID property. Client application component, like that. Easy enough. And so now when I look at my title, my app component, we can get rid of all of this stuff here. And we can just have this go to the router outlet. And now I should have an example that I can use of my Title bar Yeah, so over here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here a new Just a second Is we're going to say if you're authenticated then here you can say a div, I'm sorry, we're just going to have a button here, which is a mat icon button, and my class is going to be a nav bar underscore logo. And then in this, we can just have the image source 
equal to, and for now I'm just going to use a logo from a different app because I haven't created this one yet. And I can give it the alternative name of the, um, the monitor logo. And now what we need to do is we need to have our buttons. So the first one here is a map button. My class is going to be a nav bar element. And my router link is going to be going to nowhere. And so in this now we want to have a map icon, which is called clear all. And this one's going to say clear. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again for another button here. And this one's going to go to applications. And this is called apps. And we can say client applications. Okay, and let's do an ng serve and see where we're at. Okay, that's done. So now we can go up here and check this out and go to login. So the login link is currently incorrect. Here, when we go to the login, we just want to go to the basic page. And that should be fine. There we go. Oh no, it's still redirecting me. Home, login partial. Interesting. Let's try stopping and starting it again. There we go. So now what it's telling me is mat icon is not a known I element. So what that means is that in my Angular app, Underneath your imports, hold on.
because it's called material module, which is in shared modules. Export here is a material module. Right? Because this should have your mat icon module in it. So then in your shared module, you have your modules module as an import. And there, And then here, we can get rid of providers. And I want to bring in here a features module. Should be exporting that shared module. Same issue. So if I change this to be a material module. So this is upset at me for some reason. It says that in materials module, this mat icon module is not being loaded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look over here. And I'm going to look for a material dot module. It also has in here the core module. I didn't think that was going to capture it. So let me try doing this and then we'll run this again. That's so bizarre. Well, if I look back in my client applications, and I got rid of that little tag, doing our login here. And that worked. 
and it's showing my icons correctly. Why wouldn't it be grabbing my materials module? Why can't I find that? Hmm. I just did that. Material module. So why is this not taking? Why wouldn't this be taking? This is unbelievably frustrating. Well, in either case, we can keep moving on for now and come back to this one in a little bit as to why that's... Can't find angular material icons module. Okay, so on this, now when we click on client applications, this brings me over to the client applications page, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and make our first client application. So in the back end, I'm going to go to my domain library. I'm going to create a new entity called client application. And we want this to be a base entity. And on this, we want to have a string for the client name. We want to have a string 
for the um, OAuth token. Do I want to have anything else other than that? You could have a string for the client description. You can have a new entity type in here called a project, which is going to be a base entity. And on this project, we want to have a number of I collection of your client application called client applications. In this one, you want to have a string here for the project name, string for the project domain. And inside of here now, we want this to have a GUID to the project ID, and then also a project project. Okay, so now over here on our domain context, I'm going to add in here a DB set for my project called projects and a DB set for my client application called client applications. Okay, first things first. Let's make a web API endpoint for this. So underneath the web API here, we're going to make a new controller. And I'm going to call this a API controller with read write actions. And I'm going to call this the projects controller. Give it a second here to load that. So we can get rid of everything in here. And in my projects controller, we're going to have a new controller called a base controller. And we need to have some things in this one. We need this API controller there. And we're going to have a constructor, which is going to have a the iMapper in it, protected read-only iMapper called Mapper. And we want this to be abstract. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to have this protected asynchronous task returning an application user view model called get application user asynchronous. So we also need to inject here the application DB context. except for I want to do this with my service. So it's called 
high service data access layer. So in here, we're going to first get my ASP.NET user ID from my user.claims.first, where the type is equal to sub. And then I want to get my application user equals await data access layer dot read application user by their ASP.NET user ID. If my application user is equal to null, then we want to add the user here. Otherwise, we're going to return my mapper.map to my application user VM of my application user. So to do this, we're going to get my access token equals my request.headers dot first, where the key is equal to authorization. And we want to get the first one and split it by the space and give it a one. And now using this var client equals new HTTP client, we're going to first get my discovery endpoint. Get discovery document asynchronous. And this comes from the identity model client. And we want to do this for the globals. of the identity server URI. Then we're going to get the response here equals await client dot get user info of my user info request. We can say the address is equal to the disco dot user info endpoint and the token is equal to my access token and then your application user is going to be equal to a await of your data access layer dot create application user of this new request like that. And then you want to say, if your await data access layer dot commit asynchronous is less than or equal to zero, then you want to return null. And here what we're going to do is we're going to say else if your application user dot username does not equal to your oh that's it okay we need to have a couple of other ones in here which were also on our base hub which are these
So we also need to have on here a git log right here. And my IP address now is request.http context.connection.remote IP address dot two string. Okay, you're right, log asynchronous. And you're right, log error. Okay. So that's done. So now in your projects controller, we can inherit from base controller. And we want to have our constructor. And then the first one that I want to do is I want to have a public asynchronous task of an I action result. And I want to call this get. So this has an HTTP get like this of projects. And we want to say it produces the response type of a type of project DTO array for a status codes 200. And if it's a 500, we don't have anything that we return. Additionally, we're going to want to have this summary panel up here, and we're going to say that this is a get for my projects. And this is going to say get the registered projects. And it returns the project data transfer objects registered to the application user. And then finally, we need to have the response here of code 200. And this one's going to be the application users registered apple client registered projects were successfully retrieved. And then again, we need to do it for the response code equals 500. And on this one, we can say the there was a problem with the server. So when we're running this, we're first going to create our application user, which is a get application user asynchronous, and also the log. And this is going to be for an endpoint type of web API projects get. And the other piece here is my application user dot ID. Now I'm going to have a try and a catch with an exception. And this one's going to be a write error log of the EX and then your log. And then this one's going to be a write log API of your status code, which is internal server error. And you also want to pass in your log. And then you want to do an await data access layer dot commit asynchronous. And then you want to return a new status code result of status codes dot 500. Now, if it's right, you want to do a var projects here 
equals await your data access layer dot read. And now we're going to look at this one and we're going to create a new function called read projects asynchronous, which is going to be a project DTL here. And now in the library, we need to create a new class called a project DTL and a project view model. Okay, under the identity or the um, domain library, project only has two things, name and domain. So these two. And then on my data access layer auto mapper, we need to add in this for project and project. So this is now read projects asynchronous of my application user dot ID. And then you're going to do a write log API of the OK and log. You're going to do uh, if my await data access layer dot commit asynchronous is greater than zero, then you want to return an OK of your projects. And that's it. We also need to add on here that this is authorized and will break on the front. Okay, finally, we need to go look inside of our data access layer. And now I need to have a public virtual asynchronous task of project DTO called read projects asynchronous, passing in the GUID of the application user ID. And here what you can do is you can say var entities equals await context.projects.where your application user ID. If you look at project, Each user is going to have a number of project called projects, and each project is going to have one application user. and where it's active. And then we'll go to to list asynchronous. And then I want to get my DTO is equals a new list of project DTO. And then for each one of my entity and entities, I want to do a DTOs dot add of a mapper dot map to a project DTO of my entity. And then I want to return down here my DTOs.toArray. And that's it.
let's go ahead and add the rest of these things. So we're going to need to have a read project singular. which is a project view model. That's a GUID ID and the application ID. You're going to have one for create a project, which needs to be a project create request request and a GUID for the application user ID. You're going to have a update project asynchronous with this update request. And then this one is a delete project asynchronous, which is a GUID ID. that. Which means down here under requests, we're going to make a new request here called a project create request and a project update request. Just a second. These things need to get moved onto this other class. and then a project update request, which is also these two things. Easy enough, right? And so now we're going to look at this again. And I'm going to have my next one here, which is a project view model called read project asynchronous, which needs to be a GUID ID. And you want to get the first or default asynchronous where your s dot ID is equal to ID and your s dot application user ID is equal to that and it's active. And now if my entity does not equal to null, then you want to return a mapper dot map to a project VM of your entity. Otherwise you want to just return null. And then we can make this conditional. Okay, we have a public virtual project VM called create project asynchronous, which is a project create request and a GUID for the application user ID. And all you're going to do here is same thing like you did up here. We're going to map to the project from the request. We're going to assign the 
entity dot application user ID equals application user ID. We're going to add this to projects and then we're going to map it right back here. The next one is a public virtual asynchronous task of project VM called update project asynchronous with a project update request and a good for the application user ID. And for this one, we can use this as the guide. So we're going to get the first projects here. And then we're going to map it. Is that the timestamp? And you want to say where your application user ID equals application user ID and like that. And then you're going to map it back here. And then the last one is public virtual asynchronous task of a pool called remove or delete project asynchronous of a good ID and a good of the application user ID. For that one, you just use this. You're going to get your project here. And that's it. So up here we need to change the create because this is create project with no asynchronous element. Like that. And that's it. Let's finish our Web API endpoints. So this was only a get. We need to do this again for a registered single project. So we'll do that here by copying this and we'll just say that this is for one project. And in here we want to have this as a GUID with the ID and we want this to be required. Like that. And then here we want to say params for the ID. We're going to say the ID of the requested project registered to the application user and returns the project view model registered. The application user's registered project was successfully retrieved. There was a problem. 
Okay, we're also going to have one for code 400. And we're going to say the requested project could not be found. This one we can say the requested project was successfully retrieved. Like that. Code 400 is going to be a GUIN. And that looks right. So we have one here for project get, we have one here for project create, we have one for project update, and then we have one for delete. like that. Now I want to say if my project does not equal to null, then we want to do this. Else, I want to say that my write log API is going to be a not found, which is what? Isn't that a 403? I think we want a bad request for 400, and then we'll pass in the log. And now if my await data access layer dot commit asynchronous is greater than zero, then you want to return a bad request of the ID. Okay, we still have a few more here. We have the create. So we'll do this. And we're going to say that this one is the create or post. And we're going to say create a new project. We're going to pass in here the project create request called request. And this is now going to be called request. And this is going to be say that it's a the project create request. And it returns a the newly created project view model. And we're going to have a code 201 was created successfully. We're going to have a 400. The requested project could not be created. And then a 500. So like this, put this as projects ID. This is going to be a create project of my request, my application ID. And this is going to be the project create request. Okay, we have two more. We have the update. Update on existing project. The project 
update request the updated project view model 200 was updated successfully 400 the request could not be found or updated and 500 is there's an error in the server this one needs to have the ID here This one is update, and this is an update request. This one needs to be a from body. Same with this one. And then we want to have a good for the ID, which is also required. the ID of the project to be to update. So if my request dot ID equals my ID, then what you want to do is a update project asynchronous and if it does not equal to null then we're going to do okay otherwise it's going to be a bad request that looks right and the last one is the delete Which is right here. Delete project. And this says delete a registered project. The ID of the requested project to be deleted returns a HTTP code 204 if the delete was successful. So 204, the requested project was successfully deleted. 400, the requested project cannot be found or deleted. There was an internal problem with the server. This one is a delete. It's going to be like that. And this is an HTTP delete. This is an HTTP put. This is an HTTP post. This one is going to return here a status code of type 204, a GUID, or nothing. Project delete. This is going to be a delete project asynchronous. So if you can do this and it's true, then what you want to do is you want to write this thing and commit it. has no content
like that. And the only other thing that you needed to do was that this one is an okay. And this one is a created. And that's it for the web API piece. So let's go ahead and run it. We can check out our swagger, which is here. And here you can see all of our different projects. Post to projects, get projects, put projects, delete projects. So that looks right. And it should not validate me in because I don't have that completed yet. It should say unauthorized. And it does. Okay, since that one's done, what we can do is over here on features, I need to make a new page here called ng generate component and it's going to be in features projects then I'm going to do one more for project just one second here But actually, I am out of time. Thank you for staying with me this morning. I'll be back again tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you have any questions, make sure you put them into our chat at Discord, discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com. Also, I put all these videos up at youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com. Thanks again for staying with me today, guys. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.